The transformation of Ireland's water sector took a major step forward in January this year, as Irish water became Ishka Éireann and assumed full responsibility for the delivery of all public water services in Ireland. I met with Ishka Éireann's Chief Executive Niall Gleeson to find out more about how Ishka Éireann will continue delivering for households, communities and businesses across Ireland. Now, what's in the name? What's in emphasising Ishka Éireann now as the name of the organisation rather than Irish Water? So Ishka Éireann is a new organisation. First of all, we separated from, from the Urvia Group, so we're now a standalone utility. And secondly, we want the Ishka Éireann name to be the name for the Irish Water staff and the local authority water services staff coming in, in together into a new entity. This new entity will deliver for communities around the country and allow those communities to thrive, and that's our, our main aim. Um, I suppose we have three main areas of, of uh, focus. One is safe drinking water, so we want to ensure that all the population of Ireland gets safe drinking water. The second is enhancing the environment, so our, our, our drinking water is, is good and the, any wastewater that we, we discharge is, has no impact or is, is even beneficial to the, to the environment. And then the, final, the third pillar is growth. So we have a huge demand on the country for growth, for housing, for foreign direct investment. So we need to be one entity that can deliver and work well together and, and deliver for the, for the Irish communities. What are your ambitions for the company? What is it that you will be doing? Well, we have a huge amount of work to do. There's been significant underinvestment over the last 60, 80 years. So our infrastructure is in, in poor condition. So we're investing over a billion a year annually to, to improve that infrastructure and to deliver. The investment that you're making every year, the 1.2 billion per annum that you're going to spend, how is that going to be spent and what are the priorities? Safe drinking water is the main priority, so we're upgrading plants, we're putting in new plants all around the country. So we just built a state-of-the-art plant up in Vartry, which replaced a plant that was built back in 1860. So you can see how we need these upgrades. Uh, so huge up upgrade works around those, around those plants. Uh, along with that, we're investing hugely in the network because, as we all know, there's, there's massive leakage in Ireland. We've gone from 50% leakage down to 37% now nationally, but that needs to be brought down much further. We're aiming to get um, in the Dub Greater Dublin area below 20% and nationally uh, up below 25% by 2030. That's our challenge, but we're spending huge amounts of, of money every year on getting leakage down a very old system. And then finally, it's upgrading the, the wastewater treatment plants down in... in uh, in Ring's End, we're spending 500 million to get that plant back into compliance, and that covers the waste from 40% of the country. So again, a big challenge there. First of all, that plant is out of compliance at the moment, so we're cleaning up the bay by doing the work we're doing. Um, but secondly, it, we are building in a, a additional capacity in that plant. So we'll have capacity for growth for the GDA area to allow more housing, more investment, and we know that growth is coming, so we need to be able to cater for it. At the same time, we're, we're in planning and, and in the consenting process for a sister plant, the Greater Dublin Drainage Plant over in Clonshock, and we're working, we're working to get that approved and through the process. And that'll support Ring's End as population and as we get further growth into the, into the 30s. And what improvements have you made in relation to boil water notices? Boil water notices come in when we realise there's a problem with the quality of the water. So we, don't, we do it when we know there's an issue. And the more testing we do and the more observations we have in the plants, the more issues we find. So that's why we probably had a, a, an increase in boil water notices that we're now managing to bring back down again. But with, with increased testing and increased monitoring, you will get more boil water notices. But once we know where the problems are, we can fix them. The sourcing of water, there's a lot of uh, publicity about the possible use of River Shannon water for Dublin. Where is that at? So we've done a study, it's the National Water Resources Plan. So it's, it's the study of the entire country. So where are the resources, uh, where are they going to be in 50 years time? We've done climate change projections. So we're looking at all of that, all the resources in the country. And the Shannon is certainly one where we think there's, there's great potential, not just for Dublin, but for the, ent the entire spine that, 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 that will flow through the Midlands. So all of the towns around there through Tipperary, Mullingar, whatever, would benefit from this. It, look, it's, it, the Shannon is a fantastic resource for the country and it's something that we should be uh, able to tap into. We'll take a very small amount of the water that flows into the Shannon and 30 kilometres downstream it goes into the sea. So, you know, our impact will be minimal. Environmentally, it's a, it's a water treatment plant that we've built all over the country already. They're, 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 they're low impact and it's a long pipe through the country that we've, you know, gas networks have been doing that for years. So there are, it, that, this is proven technology, it's a proven solution. 
and really for, for Dublin and the East, Eastern Midlands to thrive with climate change, uh, you know, we know it's going to get wetter in the West and drier in the East. That's what, that's not what the models are telling us. So we definitely need that extra supply. The Liffey, which we take 85% of our water from the Liffey in the, in the greater Dublin area, that's just not going to survive climate change. And it, the growth that we project in Dublin, if the Liffey isn't going to be, isn't going to be suitable. But is there more to Ishka Air and particularly as an environmental company for the future? Yeah, well, we would see ourselves as, you know, a huge impact on the environment. So we need to be, uh, that impact needs to be for good. I'd like to see us become a sustainability exemplar. So as a semi-state company, we have a bit of flexibility about how, how we spend. We don't have to think short term. We can look at longer term projects. And we think longer term investment in our, our plants, but also in, in how we get our energy for those plants. We consume about 20% of what the of, of the public sector energy, so that's a huge bill every year, and we want to leverage that to to invest in more sustainable energy sources, and we can use our plant footprint to do that, whether it's wind or, or solar, or we can even use hydro in, in the pipes. So a huge amount of work there on the sustainability side, but also just um, investing upstream in the river basin, river basin management. So, you know, the, the better thing for us is to have water that's going into our water treatment plants that doesn't need a lot of treatment. So that means investing time with farmers and landowners on, you know, the quality of runoff and, and getting the timing of spreading right and what goes onto the field. So we need to do a lot of cooperation on the environmental side. It's not all about concrete and pumps. We need to do, we need to work with a lot of different people to try and reduce the load on our, on our systems before it actually gets to us. The most recent census gave us a surprising rise in the population of the country and it's meant that a lot of the projections for the future may be surpassed, that we're going to have an awful lot more people living, an awful lot more people needing houses and apartments and also an awful lot more industry. How is Irish Water placed for supplying the necessary infrastructure? So we've, we've done an analysis of all the towns and villages in Ireland as far as their capacity for growth, both in, both in drinking water and wastewater. And we've published those registers, they're up on our website. So we know and we encourage developers to go into areas where we know we have capacity. And we have delivered last year, we made connection offers for about 37,000 housing units across the country. So we can deliver. Um, we obviously need to keep investing that 1.2 billion a year in order to keep, our, keep abreast of it. But we have the structures in place that will allow us to deliver those housing units. You obviously have day-to-day -day purposes in Ishka Erin that you have to serve, such as clean drinking water to people, removing sewage. But how much of you have a bigger, grander vision, perhaps, of what you need to do for the country for its economic development? Yeah, well, I think, th I think when you look at programmes like our National Water Resources Invest Plan, the, the investigation of all the sources shows that we are... You know, that was a 25-year view of, of where, we, where Ireland is going and what it's going to look like in 25 years' time, taking into account population growth, taking into account climate change and how those sources are going to change over time. So we are taking a, a really long-term view. And, you know, a lot of our infrastructure will last 20, 30, 40 years. I mean, the, the Shannon supply, that pipe should last 100 years, you know. So we do have to look long-term. We have to look at where, where uh, growth is going to be, is going to be and, and how we can support that growth. So definitely... While we deal day to day with business as usual stuff, we do have a, a, an, a team that is looking at longer term stuff, solutions. Can you sum up your ambitions for the organisation? I'd like our, you know, Ishka Aaron to be an exemplar on, on sustainability. I think we've got the capacity to really transform things like uh, water treatment, but not just that, just uh, you know, river basin management, the landscape, working with landowners and all around the country. So I think Ishka Aaron can have a transformative effect and what I'd like people in years to come to be able to say or to be able to ask, you know, well, if you were trying to get something done, well, how did Ishka Aaron do that and how do they manage it? And look at the way we've delivered services over the past 20 years when they're looking back and copy stuff we've done. And that's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm.